So here's another very nice system, one of my favorites actually, and we'll learn a lot from it. It involves what I call the dial pad matrix for obvious reasons. And you should take a moment and pause the video if you have to, to determine the relationships among the columns, if there are any, and the relationship between the right hand side and the columns of the matrix. So let's identify the particular solution first. And in this case, I think it's especially easy because it almost strikes you that the right hand side is 10 times the middle column. So in order to obtain the right hand side by a linear combination of the columns of this matrix, we need to take zero of this column and zero of this one and 10 of the middle column. So here we will write this as a column, zero, 10, zero, and we're done with a particular solution. Now let's determine the null space. And it, and it is based on the feature that I very much like throwing in because it's not super easy to see. It's a little bit hidden, but with a little bit of practice, you can learn to identify this feature. And again, I'm trying to make these problems not too hard, not so hard that you would have to use Gaussian elimination to see the relationships, but not so easy, just so that doing these systems is a little bit of fun. So the feature that I'm talking about, which I think is apparent given the dial pad structure of this matrix, is that the middle column is the average of the first and the third. Indeed, two is the average of one and three, five is four plus six over two, and eight is likewise the average of seven and nine. So how does that help us? Well, write it down. Let's write it down. We can write that C2, let C2 denote the second column, is one half C1 and one half C3. So we can easily convert this into a non-trivial linear combination that equals zero. It would be one half C1, bad choice of location because we'll need this for the null space, so I'll write it down here. C1, one half C1 minus C2 plus one half C3 equals zero. I'll make it bold to indicate that it's the zero column, not zero the number. So there we go. The coefficients of our non-trivial linear combination are one half minus one and one half. So we can write plus alpha. This is capturing the null space. And I think that just about everybody prefers integers. So instead of writing one half minus one, one half, we'll multiply the whole linear combination by two and we'll have one minus two, one. One minus two, one. Okay, and the system is solved. So very nice and very interesting, at least I think so. So now let me make one small change to the system. That will give us a new system. And let's talk about that system. Let me, let's see, sneak a one in here. So instead of 20 on the right hand side, let's have 120. So the vector on the right hand side is 120, 50, 80. So take a moment now to think about this system. So the first thing that we would observe is that the null space is of course unchanged. We didn't touch the columns of the matrix. We didn't touch the left hand side. So the column space is unchanged. What about a particular solution? Well, the obvious thing is that at the very least, it's not easy to find. But the problem is deeper than that. It's actually not possible to solve the system. The system doesn't have any solutions because the right hand side is not in the span of the columns on the left hand side. The right hand side is not in the column space. Can you see why? So that's a very important question that we're about to discuss and we'll learn more from that question than we did from the first linear system which had this very nice solution. So let me erase this part of the board and show you the problem with this linear system as it appears on the board right now. So as we just discussed, the middle column is the average of the other two. 
But that's actually not relevant for the question of the column space. What is relevant for the column space is that the rows have the same property. The middle row is the average of the other two. I'll give you a moment to see that for yourselves. And why is that relevant? Well, it's not so much a question of the rows, but the fact that the columns all have the feature that the middle entry is the average of the other two. This middle entry is the average of the other two, and this middle entry is the average of the other two. And this feature is relevant because it is preserved by linear combinations. It is a linear property. We discussed linear properties at length in the past, and that's why it was such an important discussion. So because each one of these columns has that property, any linear combination of the columns will have the same property. Let me summarize it with an equation. Summarized by an equation, it simply states that the column space, which we denote by the letter R, has the pattern, if you will, A, B, A plus B over 2. This is just a mathematical way of saying that any linear combination of the columns will have the property that the middle entry is the average of the other two. So that's the only kind of vectors that you can obtain from the columns of this matrix by linear combinations. Meanwhile, the column on the right hand side does not have that property because 50 is not the average of 120 and 80. So it is not possible to obtain the right hand side as a linear combination of the columns. Therefore, the system doesn't have a solution. So we now see that both the null space and the column space are critical when solving linear systems. You would identify the column space in order to determine whether the right hand side is in the column space and in other words whether the system has a solution in the first place. And you would determine the null space because it is an integral part of the general solution which always equals a particular solution which is just one way to get the right hand side plus the null space. So we learned quite a bit from the system.